Hey, this is Becca with Rebecca Recreative, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to check your metrics monthly as an entrepreneur. If you are someone who hates doing this, comment below and say you are not alone because I am someone that I know I should do this, especially as a website designer, know what's working, what's not working for my business, but I hate it. So a lot of people will do it weekly, some people do it monthly. I try my hardest to do it monthly, but in this video, I'm gonna show you kind of how I analyzed two months because Let's just be honest, I didn't do it. <laughs> and also, um, my I'm analyzing May and April because May kind of sucked in my business and financially. And I want to do April because it makes me feel better. So I know a lot of people um, need to check their finances and they need to check kind of how their website is performing. So I will link below more about the performance, how to check like the performance of your website. So with that, that's Google Analytics um, and going into the back end. That's gonna be another video, I'll link it below. And um, it still applies, it's, I think I created it a couple years ago, but still works. So go ahead and watch that if you wanna know more about how I get into the nitty gritty. Um, Google Analytics can be super overwhelming, there's so much. And for me, I'm not looking for all that information, I'm looking for the basics of how are people getting to my website, what blogs are performing the best so that I can optimize that and um, really work with it, right? So um, what didn't work? Let's start there. What didn't work, it's currently also July and I'm analyzing April and May. Um, I wrote this blog in May and I'm getting the video done in July. This is just what momming while having your own business, like this is just the reality, right? So. You know, it's all over the place. So for April and May 2022, what didn't work for my business was one, I had a big launch um, trying to sell my Squarespace uh, with confidence, which is a Squarespace DIY course. And it didn't go so well. And I think we hear a lot about the successful 10 figure launches. And I'm here to tell you about my non successful. I sold one course. Um, so it's probably one of my worst launches, but I was trying new things with that launch. I was trying to focus on just my email uh, list and I didn't do any type of like, um, really I didn't do a ton of build up, which usually I do, like creating blog posts related to Squarespace and then I sell the course. Um, I didn't do a lot of that. I also did not do any type of like live launching webinar, which usually works really well. I just told my email list about it and kind of saw where it went from there. So that didn't go so well, um, but I'm having grace on myself. And then also, like I said, May kind of sucked financially for my business. Um, and that was part of the reason. I also um, had, I'm an affiliate for the legal page. I really promote her, um, her contract and I'll link it below as well for website like privacy policy. And so she was doing like a sale and I was a promotion for that and I didn't get any, any sales for that. So that didn't go well and therefore I didn't hit my profit goal for May at all. But let's talk about what worked really well. I had plenty of time with my husband and my daughter and I had a baby nine months ago. I went through maternity leave and um, had a great maternity leave. I'm stepping back into business. I'm focusing on website in a days and I didn't get those two website in a days. That's my goal per month. Um, it was the first time I didn't hit that and um, that allows for more time with my daughter, which is great. And also more time to focus on myself, like running and just, you know, personal stuff. So that was great. Um, my big wins for April, so that was May. Um, I had three web Santa days in April. My goal is two to hit that financial goal. And so having an extra one was really nice and that I can just count it as May and it's great. Um, I also purchased a new phone, which I struggle so much with spending money, period. But I even struggle more with spending money on my business and a phone is when you have a really old phone and like you're supposed to be doing these Instagram reels and whatnot, it's just, you know, how to buy a new phone, got a new phone, patting myself on the back for that one. Okay, so assessing the facts and feelings is kind of the next step that I do uh, because I do think the facts are very important, but I also think that if you are only basing your business on facts and not how it makes you feel, you're going to have burnout. And I've experienced it and I'm not here to do it again. So um, I assess time, money, and dreams. So time. I got a lot of time with my daughter and I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom and have a business and um, I'm not perfect at that but that's kind of why I decided on the two website in a day models because then hypothetically I'm working only two days a month of course as an entrepreneur that's I'm working like every day but 
I can, you know, I don't have to be as diligent, I guess. Whereas when I was website designer for six weeks designing a full website, it was a little bit more intensive. So I got a lot of time with my daughter. Money, I made what I needed for April, not May. That was part of the facts. And then dreams, um, I feel like I'm living on. Like, this is what I wanted. I started this business four years ago because I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. And that's what I get. So dream-wise, it's going really well. Um, and then I, I like to analyze monthly resolutions. So just something small that you can, can commit to do every day or to break or to add a habit. Um, and so when I'm creating a monthly resolution, I like to look at, like, how do I want to feel in the next month? And I wanted, this again was my anal me analyzing back in May how I wanted to feel for June. And I really wanted to feel that peace that I felt in May, um, really relaxed. Um, but I also wanted to make money. So uh, I, I in, like for you, when you're analyzing this, like maybe for you, you want to feel informed or connected or inspired. And so maybe that would lead you to then decide you want to purchase a course or whatever. But for me, it was I want to feel at peace and relaxed. Um, so what I was going to step into June to do that was making exercise more of a steady thing, which I did. I created a schedule of a running plan um, and then trained for a half marathon. And then I wanted to read more fun books, um, and I did do that. I went to both of our lake, my husband and my lake cabins in the Midwest. And so we were able to read, I was able to read a lot of books there. Um, and then I'm still postpartum. So just focusing on my mental health. And for me, what that looks like is more hanging out on my porch in the morning. I feel like that kind of grounds me. So that was my monthly resolution for June and July. And I feel like I did a pretty good job with that. Um, and then in terms of like, the financial side of monthly resolutions I wanted to get again two website a day clients and I was able to do two in June and I had one in July so overall I felt pretty good about that especially because I was trying to balance the being at peace and relaxed you know what I mean I don't know if this is making any sense if it's not I'm sorry but here we are okay monthly analytic analytic tracker so going in and tracking your analytics is really important I actually track my email growth weekly I just go on to Flowdesk and see where I'm at and put in that number of active subscribers and kind of see where that's going and um, I had a big drop because of the launch so I just know that you it's really easy to build your email list and then when you go into a launch period where you're sending out emails every single day sometimes multiple times a day people unsubscribe that's fine they're not going to buy from you anyway. So um, I was okay with that. I went from uh, 721 to 697. Again, I'm fine with it. Um, they're not going to buy from me anyway. So it's really like the purpose isn't just to buy, right? I give them so much valuable free content week after week after week, and then probably twice a year I sell. So I felt fine with that. Um, email metrics, like I said, I do track that weekly income. Um, I will give you the income report. I For April, I had uh, made about $3,000 for the day rates I do, the website in a day. I made about, well, I have one social media client, so I made $550 there. And then for courses, I made $340 in May for the day rate. I made $825 um, because I had half of, they paid half up front kind of thing. And then uh, social media. So just quite a bit lower in terms of finances, but I was fine with that. And then Google Search Console. So I talk about Google Analytics. Like I said, I will link my blog post and in there it will have kind of how I do Google Analytics and stuff. And you can click on that video if you want. But Google Search Console is a little bit different. And I um, really suggest if you are a small business owner, getting on Google Search Console. You see a lot of like brick and mortars in that using it, but not a lot of service-based businesses. And I think it is a key to success because you can pop to the top of Google, even if you're a new business. Um, you know that map, that's what I'm talking about. So like getting yourself on that map. And if you don't want to put your home address or if you don't serve just a tiny city, you can put a territory. So all of the United States. That does make it a little bit harder to rank, but it is um, worthwhile to do that. And then if you start getting reviews on that, it'll just start moving you up. So with, and then you get like I get like a monthly report um, and I think it's really interesting. So um, I had about 2,000 clicks to my website um, from Google Search Console and 
that's good. Total impressions, it gives you that. Um, but what I really like looking at is the top queries, so or the top pages as well, because that tells me what um, is performing really well. A lot of times it's my blog post. Um, for both the months, it was the Canva animation blog post, um, and also for Tricks to Canva, which can tie into my website designer business, especially it, like with Squarespace. A lot of times I will create things on Canva um, because Squarespace just doesn't have that capability of editing. So that's kind of how I'm going to tie that into my business. And I just know like, okay, those Canva ones are performing well. I'm going to create more Canva blog posts and then direct them to um, like my Squarespace course. So that is that. I also analyze YouTube. Um, just how many views and new subscribers I'm getting. And then, of course, what is the top video? So for whatever reason, one of my top YouTube videos, which it's always the ones you don't want, um, is how to import photos to your products on Shopify. I don't even work with Shopify. I worked with Shopify one time, and I had so much trouble figuring this little trick out that I created a video so that I would, A, remember how to do it later if I ever did, and B, could help other people and Apparently, it has helped a lot of other people, which is great. But unfortunately, I don't do Shopify, so there's no way to tie it into my business. But whatever. It is what it is. Um, and then the, my second one was how to change Squarespace header text and more insight styles. So, okay, Squarespace is something people are interested in. I'll create more videos like that. Um, and then I, from there, kind of analyzing all that da data, I go into creating monthly, weekly, and daily goals. And... Um, my monthly goals, I would like to touch on multiple different aspects of my life. If you've ever heard of Cultivate What Matters, I will sometimes use their planner to create goals for um, like physical goals, athletic type goals, um, spiritual goals, business goals. Like I really try to do my relationship goals. So anyway, with that monthly, I have pray about where to donate. Um because I don't, we donate monthly, so I want to be more intentional about not just like throwing money at whatever organization, but actually praying about it. Um, read one book that brings me pure joy, so non-work related. Um, and I did both of those. I said read the Psalms and did not do that. Um, grow my strawberries and keep them alive, and I have done that, so feeling pretty good about that. Um, grow my email list to 25. I didn't do that. Um, plan my summer trips. I did half of that and schedule a tech-free day, and I did not do that. Um, so I won't go into the weekly and the daily goals. If you want to read the blog, you can go over to the blog and see what my weekly and daily goals were and whether I accomplished those or not. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I analyze my monthly things. Again, a lot of people will do this type of thing weekly. That's just overkill for me. I don't have time for that. But I do think it's important to kind of check your finances, see how you're lying there, and then um, also, of course, your website and how your website is performing. So let me know if you have any questions about um, entrepreneurship or checking finances and all the stuff um, below and I will give you any tips I have.